Greetings, everybody. Well, time to look at Star Trek Generations, the first movie to feature the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation. <sighs> now, I know what some of you guys are thinking, that I should probably think that this is the worst Star Trek movie rather than Star Trek V. But you know what? Despite all the flaws and kind of, and like confusing things that this movie has, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not as, I mean, it's not as, well, almost epic like Star Trek 3 was, but still, this movie is just, eh, in my humble opinion. So, let's get started, shall we? So, basic plot of Star Trek Generations that we open up with the christening of the USS Enterprise NCC 1701B Excelsior class. And on their first and on their first trial run, we see Kirk, Scotty, and Chekhov there for some weird reason. But anyway, while they're anyhow, while the Enterprise B is is flying around the solar system, they pick up a distress call. And it turns out that two ships that are transporting Elorian refugees to Earth are stuck in this weird space ribbon thing called the Nexus. And unfortunately, they can't. The Enterprise B isn't able to save one of the other ships, or one of the ships. So they do their best to rescue the other one, and thankfully they do. And two of the survivors that we see are is Soren, played by Malcolm McDowell, and Guinan, played by Whoopi Goldberg. Now that's very interesting too because I never really knew that because I never really knew that much about Guinan before this movie. I mean, yeah, I know her people were were scared by the Borg and stuff like that, but but to have her be in that part of the movie was actually kind of nice and I like that. But now the big problem is that the Enterprise B has to get out of the Nexus. So there's some techno babble that they have to deal with because there's counter techno babble and blah blah blah. But thankfully, Kirk is able to do what he always does, save the day, but unfortunately at the cost of his own life, or so we think. So anyway, we then transition to years later, and we see the Next Generation cast on, on the holodeck as Worf finally gets his promotion to Lieutenant Commander. Yay! But unfortunately, he goes all haywire when Riker accidentally tells the computer to remove the train, to remove the plank rather than to retract the plank. Whoopsies! So, yeah, of course, Data, being the emotional android that he is, doesn't really understand why, so he, why they think, why everyone thinks it's funny. So he ultimately pushes Dr. Crusher into the water, but no one finds it funny. Hmm. Well, that's going on, Picard gets some really distressing news, and we find out later that his brother, his brother's wife, and his nephew, Renee, were burned to death in a fire, which is kind of upsetting. I mean, that's just sucks. I mean, especially considering the fact that we only saw Renee in the episode Family and we never and we never ever get to see him again. Ever. Well, except for the ones who went for Cardis in the Nexus, but we'll get to that. So anyway, the Enterprise D then gets a distress call from the Amagosa Observatory. But when they get there, they... But when they get there, well, almost everyone is dead. Except for Malcolm McDowell's character, Dr. Tully and Soren. Who, like I said before, is also an Olorian, is obsessed with getting back to the Nexus. But while that's going on, Data finally gets his emotion chip in. Yay! But of course, he, he's trying to figure out humor, so, well, he pretty much goes in a, well, he pretty much becomes just really annoying and stuff like that. I mean, he's saying things like, Mr. Tricorder, and open sesame, and all that stuff. Even finally understanding a joke that Jordy told during Counter Farpoint. Of course, I don't really know what the joke is, but I'm guessing it might, but oh well, well. But oh well, I mean, hey, I don't know if they have that scene up on YouTube, but probably not, so there you go. <laughs> so, anywho, it turns out that the Romulans were, lo were, were looking for a trilithium, a nuclear inhibitor, which can, which can stop all fission with a a nuclear inhibitor which can stop all fusion with a star. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? <laughs> so when you data and Jordy go over to the observatory to find to check it out, but unfortunately they get ambushed by Soren and then a Klingon bird of prey piloted by the Dura sisters show up. 
And of course, Soren kidnaps Jordy and Data's two chickened out because of the emotion ship. And it turns out that, that Soren is working with Adora's sisters, so that way he could give them a weapon that ultimately they'll help them in reconquering the Klingon Empire. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? So anywho, Picard and Data ultimately figure out Soren's evil plan that he's going to blow up a star so, we can, so that way he can, you know, get pulled back into the Nexus. Yeah, kind of, well, weird, don't you think? But, oh well, what can you say? So anywho, the Enterprise arrives in the Viridian system, ahead, of, but the Klingons are already there. So then Picard makes a prisoner exchange with the Dora sisters. Then, of course, they get Jordy back, but unfortunately Jordy has, well, has a camera hooked up to his visor that that allows the Klingon, that allows the Dora sisters to find out the shield frequency of the Enterprise's shields. And, of course, we get a big battle, and unfortunately... The damage to the Enterprise is too great that they also have to do the so the old saucer separation technique. But of course it doesn't really work out that well. And the saucer section of the Enterprise D crashes into the planet. I gotta tell you, that scene in and of itself is just amazing. Totally, totally badass. Or cake ass, whatever, whichever way you want to say it. But oh well, there you go. <laughs> So while that's going on, Picard is trying to reason with Soren, but unfortunately it doesn't work, and so Soren is able to launch his rocket at the sun, and of course the Nexus pulls in both Soren and Picard, but sadly not the rest, but sadly not the entire Enterprise D crew, which of course doesn't really make a whole lot of sense in my humble opinion, but oh well. So the Picard is pulled to the Nexus, and of course his family is all happy and stuff like that. But then Picard realizes that of course the, it isn't real. But then he turns to Echo Guinan for help, and she tells Picard that, that the Nexus time has no meaning, so if Picard were to leave, he could go anywhere, anytime. So then Picard decides that he wants to go back to stop Storm from destroying the star, but he'll need help. And so, whose help does he ask for? Well, James Tiberius Kirk, that's who. But of course, Kirk is is kind of on the fence about it because he realizes that this is his perfect paradise and that he realizes that if he stays well then he'll have no responsibilities and of course everything will be all hunky dory for him but ultimately Kirk realizes too that the whole Nexus, Nexus thing isn't real so then he goes back with a Picard to just stop Soren and of course it works so well except for oh yeah Kirk dies but thankfully Soren gets killed too and of course we get this scene where Picard buries Kirk under rocks. Wow. Most. Wow. That's the. That's just the most. Undignified death you could give to any character in Star Trek. Ever. But. Oh well. What can I say. So anywho. Unfortunately. The saucer section of the Enterprise D is unsalvageable. But thankfully everyone's able to get some of their things. Picard is able to get his photo album and everything's all, well, sorry for that. But everything's all hunky-dory and well and so then we get off and of course it'll lead us to the next film. So ultimately Star Trek Generations is okay, my humble opinion. I mean it could have been a lot better. They could have explained why they decided to change around the uniforms from the TNG uniforms to the DS9 uniforms and etc etc. But to be fair, well, Star Trek Generations isn't really all that bad in my humble opinion. I mean yes, people do complain about Kirk's death and how he was left on the planet and stuff like that. But well that's just what you gotta do, you know? characters die in fiction and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, yes, yeah, some of them get brought back, but still, there's no way Kirk is ever going to come back in any of the films. He's not going to be resurrected. He's just going to be brought back in a reboot, which of course we'll get to later. So, time to look at the film factoids of Star Trek Generations. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. So, here we go. All right. William Shatner has stated that his line, Who am I to argue with the captain of the Enterprise, was the hardest line he ever had to deliver. The horse that William Shatner rides is his, as are the home and farm where the sequence takes place. Hmm, interesting. 
toys based on the popular Aliens toy line are, st are apparently still around and doing well in the 21st century. The scene where Picard enjoys Christmas with his Nexus family, one of his children is playing with his Christmas gift, a slightly modified Aliens evac fighter. In the movie, Soren comments on the Forger's response to his interrogation by saying, his heart just wasn't in it. This is a reference to the form of torture used in a deleted scene in which Soren used a nanoprobe to stop and start LaForge's heart. This is also referenced in a scene, in a later scene, in which Dr. Crusher mentions that she ever moved the nanoprobe. Oh. Huh. Okay, so wait. One, two, three, four. Okay. And the last one is, in the film, Riker, played by John the Franks, obviously, says that he plans to live forever. In the television series Gargoyles, Franks plays David Zanatos, a ruthless billionaire who is obsessed with becoming immortal. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? And of course, John the Franks will be directing the next two TNG era films, and of course, we'll look at the first one of those later on when we look at Star Trek First Contact. So until then, live long and prosper. Peace out. Bye.